is looking at metadata webinar. Uh, I'm Patricia and I'll be giving the webinar. Um, Shane, who is our product support specialist, will be helping out by answering any questions that you have going through the webinar. Phones will be muted throughout the webinar, but please use the questions panel to ask any questions that pop into your head as we go through. Um, we'll be sending out the presentation slides and a recording of the webinar after we finish up. Um, so this is a, looking at metadata with Crossref is a very broad topic and we have 20 minutes. So I'll be giving a top level overview of what this means to Crossref, as well as the resources we offer for looking up metadata and for managing and for matching DOIs to citations. So looking up metadata can mean a lot of things. We have a metadata record for each item, each of the 87 plus million items in our database. Each metadata record contains some basic bibliographic metadata, but will hopefully have some non-bibliographic metadata as well. You may have a DOI and want to retrieve the metadata for that DOI. You may have a citation and you want to find the DOI for the citation, or you may want to retrieve a lot of metadata related to a topic, title, or specific function. You may also be looking for something very specific, like all research funded by a given funder in 2015, or all articles, titles containing a specific term. These are all different needs, and there are a number of different paths to get you what you want, so it can get a little confusing. I'm going to go over the options we have to get the, you the metadata you're looking for, and hopefully give you in, some insight into how things work on our end. I'll start by briefly going over what is available to you as far as metadata. Each item registered with Crossref will have a DOI, URL, and some metadata describing the item, like the author, title, publication date, volume, issue, anything you'd find in a citation of that item. All metadata comes directly from our publisher members, and for the most part, it's complete and accurate, but we can't guarantee that it is. It all depends on what our members are sending us. We also collect non-bibliographic data about the items being registered. We collect reference lists, funding data, ORCIDs, license data, clinical trial information, um, information about any errata retractions or updates through our Crossmark service. Um, some records in our, in our database have abstracts and they have data about relationships between items. All of this is optional, so it's not present for all of our records, but we're seeing more and more of our members embrace the complete metadata record. Um, with the exception of some members' reference lists, all metadata in our system is available, and most of it can be inter interrogated in some way using our APIs. So there, as I mentioned, there are a few reasons to look, use our lookup surfaces to match a citation to a DOI, to match a DOI to metadata, to retrieve metadata for a number of items based on some parameters, or to retrieve all data so that you can use it locally. Um, matching a DOI to the metadata record we have is pretty simple. Our metadata is freely available, so there are a few easy ways to get to it, and I'll touch on those briefly. Matching metadata to a single DOI, as you'd need to do if you're adding DOI links to a reference list, for example, it's, it's a bit tricky. Um, in those situations, there can be only one match and it needs to be the most accurate one. Um, this type of lookup is maybe the most complicated, but it's the most common. You can also browse for metadata by providing some broad or specific parameters, like for example, give me all metadata records for this author name and journal title with retractions. Um, sometimes um, you just might want everything. You might just want all of our data. So we'll start with the easy stuff. If you have a DOI, but you want to know what metadata we have for the DOI, um, the options are our metadata search user interface. We have a REST API. Um, we have an XML API that will give you the record as XML. And we also have an open URL service. Our metadata search interface is handy if you just want to eyeball something. You can enter a DOI as you see here. And if the DOI is registered with Crossref, we'll give you a brief metadata record. The metadata search results contain only a small amount of our total metadata, but it's, an, it's enough to let you know that you've found what you, you're looking for. 
There are some other things you can do as well. If you select the actions option by each record, you can select the site option from there to retrieve the record in VibTex, APA, and other citation styles. Um, if you look at this um, citation I'm displaying here, the eagle-eyed among you will notice the little, some imperfections. There's a missing space in the article title of this DOI. Um, I'd say most of our metadata records are good quality, but I've included this to show that they're not infallible and to demonstrate the downstream effects of tiny errors like this. Our metadata is provided by publishers don't, so we don't curate or correct it ourselves. From that action menus I mentioned, you can also select metadata as JSON to view a JSON metadata record. This record contains almost everything we have for this item. There are some little bits and pieces missing, but we'll be filling in all the gaps by the end of the year. Um, you can see multiple publication dates, when the record was initially registered, when it was last updated, what member is responsible for that item, how many items we've identified as citing a particular record, and any other metadata that's been included by the publisher, incl including complete funding, text and data mining license information, and any update, retraction, or correction information. And this data is also available directly from our REST API. I'll be talking about that in more detail in a bit. You can also retrieve a metadata record as XML using both our XML and OpenURL APIs. We have a few legacy formats for XML records, but if you specify that you want our UniXSD format, you'll get the most complete record available. And that record will contain the same info as the JSON record, but marked up as XML. It'll have the DOI, some cross-ref generated metadata, like the last update date, and a count of items we've identified as citing this item, as well as the XML deposited by the publisher. So this will have everything except reference list if the member has opted to keep those private. So that's how to find metadata for a DOI. Um, next up, I'll give you options for matching a formatted reference or bits of metadata to do DOIs. You can look up a match with either a formatted reference or with fragments of metadata. The appropriate tool really varies according to your needs and what you're capable of, of managing. You may have formatted references that you need to populate automatically. Um, the most appropriate tools for that are our simple text query form or our XML API. If you're able to evaluate the data locally and determine best matches on your own, our REST API will, will do the job for you. If you don't have formatted references, but instead have fragments of metadata or specific things you're looking for, or maybe you're, you have references, but they're really messy, um, you have similar options excluding our simple text query form, which really only works with formatted references. I want to talk briefly about what I mean by an exact match versus a match that needs evaluation. Um, our XML API and simple text query and uh, form and open URL both in the end break up citations or accepted or accept marked up metadata in which certain fields are very clearly defined. So that means we're comparing the author, the title, the publication year and page number in our database against the ones you've supplied in your query. And if we find a match, we'll give it to you. Those are some fairly, fairly direct relationships. Um, we won't give you a match if the publication years or dates or author names don't match up. Um, we're not able to state with confidence that the record in our system is what you're looking for, so you'll get nothing. Um, so this means that you can trust these results, but if the metadata you're sending us to look up references is incorrect or incomplete, or even worse, if the metadata we have on our end is incorrect or incomplete, we won't be able to make those matches. So you'll get more results with the REST API. It's like you're casting a wider net, but the results aren't bulletproof. If you're querying under limited parameters, if, or if you have the programming resources to evaluate the data you've retrieved, you can use that for automatically matching citations to DOIs, but generally the REST API is used for other things, which I'll get to soon.
So going back to the tools, um, if you want to populate a list of references with DOIs, our simple text query form will do that for you. Um, it's fairly simple, so it's aptly named. You cut and paste your references into a box and fairly quickly you'll get your reference list back with DOI links included. And you can cut and paste that back into your manuscripts. Um, note that not all items have DOIs, so not all references will be matched, but it does a pretty good job of finding all available matches. This tool is free but requires registration, and we do limit usage for this tool to 5,000 matches a month. Um, we license the um, reference parsing technology from a third party, and um, it, it can get pretty expensive, so we're just not able to provide unlimited access to this tool. Um, but it's rare that anyone has a problem with that limit, um, as it's a very manual tool. Um, so behind the scenes for each reference that we're finding a match for with this tool, we've broken that citation up into parts like article title, author, year, we mark it up as XML, and we query it against our XML API. So if you also are able to break up your citations into XML, it's a very good way of performing automated metadata to DOI queries. The results are very accurate. The XML API is designed to typically return only one DOI, unless you specify that you want multiple matches. Um, and that DOI will be the DOI that best fits the metadata supplied in the query, and you can really trust the results. The API is free for the most part. Um, you can sign up for a free account and send HTTPS queries to our system. We do have a few legacy and service specific options that are av only available to members, um, but generally they're not necessary for non-members and they're not necessary if you're just wanting to look up our metadata. XML queries give you significant control over the DOI matching process. Query results are returned in XML and will contain a full or abbreviated metadata record for matched items, depending on the request. The most precise XML query requires you to mark up each citation following rules established in our, in our um, query schema. Um, in this example, you can see that the basic citation metadata is split up into separate elements very clearly. Each citation has a query key that you can use to match the result up to the corresponding reference. The query key usually co corresponds to your reference numbering format. Um, you can also refine your query by requesting fuzzy matching on an author name, for example, or you can ask our query engine to do an author and article title query if a full metadata query doesn't find a match. You can also submit a separate author and article title query. These aren't as accurate as full metadata queries, as it's not uncommon for an article to be published in multiple journals or as book chapters, but it's an option. You can also submit an unstructured citation, meaning that the reference is surrounded by an unstructured citation tag and it's just a, a reference formatted in, for example, APA um, style. As with the simple text query form, we need to break up this reference into parts on our end so that our query engine can find a match. Um, a well-formatted journal article is easy. It's, we, we can do that. Um, books and other content types are less easy if the data is messy or it has a lot of unusual punctuation. That can also cause problems, but we do our best with it. You can also use our open URL resolver to look up matches. It's, um, for those of you that aren't familiar with open URL, you can uh, provide basic citation metadata like an author's last name, volume, page, and it'll query against our system and find the best match. It's used a lot by um, library systems like library link resolvers, and it does, it does a pretty good job and it's, it's fairly well supported. Um, We looked at our metadata search interface earlier for matching a DOI to a metadata record. You can also use that interface to search our metadata. You can enter a full reference, and if we have a record for that item, it most likely will be the first match, but that's not a guarantee. So again, you'll need to evaluate the results. 
But if you're not searching for a specific item, uh, you can enter in portions of a title, a specific term, an author name, an ORCID, an ISSN, grant or award numbers, and you'll get results. And the results look like this. Um, from these results, you can further dig into the data by limiting by content type, uh, publication year, and by publisher. Um, you can also sort by relevance or by publication year. And you can, in a, lot, in a lot of cases, filter on a specific publication by digging into that actions menu we looked at earlier. You can do similar queries and more using our REST API. That's essentially the logic that powers the metadata search interface. Our REST API allows you to search, filter, facet, and sample cross-ref met metadata. It's freely available. There's no login required. Um, you can retrieve and store the metadata and do whatever you want with it. There's, there's a range of um, things you can do with it, and that's <clears throat> it's enough for an, its, its own webinar, so we won't go into that. Um, but um, I will say that using the REST API, um, you can search our entire corpus, or you can limit it searches by a given member or a DOI prefix. Um, you can look for specifics, such as a record with funder information for a given prefix, or records from a given funder published in 2017, or records updated in 2017. Um, you can look for all records with ORCIDs, or look for records with a specific ORCID. Um, you can look for all records containing a given term. That's just a sampling of the avail available options. Um, you can do a lot of filtering by creation or publication date as well as for different pieces of specific metadata. So it's a, it's a very pop, pop, uh, powerful tool. It's probably the best option if you're doing something other than matching DOIs to citations. Or, um, there's really a lot you can do with it. And finally, we do have some options if you want to harvest all of our data. You can get everything using the RISP API, but that's a bit impractical as a lot of data and it'll take you a lot of time. Um, we have an OAI PMH service that is available by subscription. Um, if you subscribe, you'll be able to pull down our records set by set, um, a set being basically a title. So you can say, I want all the records <clears throat> for this specific journal. I want all the records for this specific book. And you can limit that by update. So you can say, I want all the records for this journal updated in 2016. Um, and if you, when you subscribe to our OAI PMH service, we're also able to provide an archi archive of all available data so you don't have to go back um, and harvest back through uh, 2000, because um, that's a lot of data. Um, we have a similar API for our publisher members that can be used to retrieve your own data. So if you're a publisher member and you want to you know, do an audit on your data to make sure you get, send us everything you think you've sent us, um, you can use our deposit harvester tool to retrieve all of that data and, and interrogate it locally. All right, that is the end of our webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the box. And if anything else comes up or you have a more in-depth question you want to ask, feel free to email support at crossref.org and either Shane or myself will get back to you.